far as, you know, we, we talked for so long there about Big 12 expansion every single time that, that you were coming on. Are you guys still talking much about what's happening there, the future of the league, or has it died down as, as the season has worn on here? No, it's actually, we're still talking about it. You know, we, we still haven't gotten into the details of, you know, um, like Quinn, uh, you know, that's something that, you know, co- uh, Commissioner Boldby has to work on uh, with those schools in terms of they as they exit or you know, discuss with their conference their exit strategy. Um, we have started looking at meeting dates that the additional four schools will be a part of, and we have started, you know, just generally speaking about, you know, future schedules, uh some of that stuff we'll probably get you know a lot more in the weeds in it over the next uh, probably few months we've got some in-person meetings coming up uh, in december and and then uh in january at the NSA convention so we'll probably start getting in those some of those details a little bit more once we get in person you still think it's it's possible that you guys do say in the next year or two add add another couple of schools i don't know that hasn't really been discussed um uh, at all uh, recently, so I don't know that you know it's a high priority. I think we got to get through kind of the logistics of uh, the, the you know the four coming in and 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 when all that transpired before I think we get back into any conversation about the, the future schools. Well, one thing, Gene, I'll ask you before I, I let you go here. To me, it's just kind of like a temperature check on these kind of things. There was it frustrated me reading an article on it was an SEC geared website about hey the you know industry sources say the Big Twelve should. Let Texas and Oklahoma go early in exchange for the SEC's vote in helping them retain Power 5 status, which, again, if we're going to expand to playoff, I don't know what exactly that really means anymore. But I, is there much validity to that line of thinking from, from what you can tell or gather right now? No, there's not, because right now with the current agreement for the college football playoff of the four, um, the way it's structured up until 2026, the five conferences – can't change it only takes one vote to keep you know like so if all four of them voted against us and bob said no we want to stay power five and stay in power five so that's not even in that they can't even have that conversation until 2026 and hopefully by that time you know we'll have figured out the expansion to, to 12 and you know at that point in time will power five really be that meaningful because in the new deal they're going to talk about you know distributions and all those things and i think we're still gonna almost i don't that to me that's just kind of a moot point anymore to be honest with you yeah and i guess on that front too just to, to tack on there are you still you're still pretty confident eventually we do get to a 12 team playoff yeah i am i mean i don't sit in the room you know uh during those conversations at all but i just think there's you know too much to gain in in so many ways again we, we've kind of talked about it on this call before just think of the interest of a 12 team uh, playoff would be this year, and how many teams would be really talking about a chance to make the make the final you know final twelve. Yeah. So um, I think it's just that. Obviously, there's money to it, but just interest in the in the entire football season for a lot more teams than just you know five or six or whatever the number is uh, as you get kind of deep into the season. Gene, I'm going to ask again about the CFP. I, I, I'm guessing you notice all of those games or see scores or highlights or all of the above and. Seems like your job's gotten a little bit tougher with some games like <laughs> Iowa going down and those kind of things. Are you paying a lot of attention to that or just a little bit? Uh, still just a little bit. You know, I, I'm going to start uh, doing some things here. We don't do our first vote in, until, uh, like I said, that first weekend in, in uh, first week in November. Right. And I've been focusing mainly on, on the conferences that I've been assigned to. Um and obviously I watch, you know, top teams in the country and, and try to pay attention to where those teams are, but I'll start working on my own little, uh, you know, top thirty, uh, just from what I, from the information they send us, and I'll start working on that here in the next, uh, probably this week and next week, and just so when I'm ready, when we do go to vote, I've got a pretty good, you know, sense of what I think would make the top thirty, and be able to talk somewhat intelligently when we get in the room. Where, where are you at on Cincinnati right now? I think as as we move forward, that that's going to be uh, one of the. <laughs> One of the sticking points for a lot of people, or one of the real lightning rod topics, is is what do you do with Cincinnati? So, what what are your thoughts on what they've been able to accomplish so far this year? You know, I, I think it's been pretty impressive. Obviously, you know, they 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 beat two teams on the road, uh, Notre Dame, um, and then they beat Indiana, which I know is not having quite the year that um, that they thought they were going to have at the beginning of the season. 
and they've beaten the teams they're supposed to beat, and they've done it pretty sound, you know, soundly. So, you know, I, we'll, we'll see how the con- season continues to go, and you know, eventually, those you know those votes will come out, and we'll figure out where people think Cincinnati is. But so far, I've been very impressed with uh, what I've seen.